We're here with Greg, Safety Integration, with yet another Tales. Well, actually, this is the inaugural, the very first <laughs> Tales of the Ouch. Tell us your story. These are going to be some right. some safety stories. Uh, yeah, this, we're gonna is? we're gonna stick with just one because I have a million. Um, so I had some people like, "Hey, your stories are lessons you learn." We really like it. When uh, we there's, talk there, about yeah, it. absolutely. I, you know, there's always a lesson in, in your story. So so here's one. Tell away. Here's one that just makes me cringe every time you think about it. So a lot of people go to work with these, right? This is how they get paid. They they make things. They repair things. They do whatever they do. So this story um, is a maintenance guy who believe it or not, went on vacation and came back from vacation. Okay. And it was his first day into work and he was on, on the night shift. So I, I've never got the true answer from him, but my feeling is he probably drove all night coming back day one, probably a little tired <sighs> and went into his, his shift. Doing something routine near the end of his shift, as simple as making an adjustment on a conveyor system that would took, took material throughout the plant. Yeah. So there's adjustment bolts that come down and it was on an elevated work platform. So he had to go up a ladder and he was up above everyone. They'd repaired a broken conveyor, put it all back together and he was adjusting it. So you just watch the conveyor run and you have a bolt on each side. You make your adjustment and it okay. tracks it to the left or right. Cause you want it to, and it was a long one. So it takes a while. Okay. And it's very um, easy to get pissed off doing that job. If it's not going right. Because then you got to adjust it this or way and then wait. Yeah, yeah, right. I understand. Right. So, and that's what he was dealing with. It was near the end of the shift. He wanted to get done. They were getting ready to change over and he wanted to go home. He was done. Well, been there 30 some years, never had an injury. And he got frustrated. He was getting frustrated. And he flat out told me, he's like, I, I, I don't know why I made this decision. I don't know why I did it. But I reached down and I pushed on the conveyor belt because I was pissed. Like I, I, I hit it with the palm of my hand. Well, where he's making those adjustments, the conveyor drive roll was right there. Oh. Where the tension is, so it grabbed. So there was a, a sharp spot on the conveyor, and it's just rubber, but there might have been a piece of metal. We're not yeah. sure what happened, yeah. but his hand, I'm guessing from where he it happened, it grabbed his right hand, and it pulled it up into the conveyor system like this, and started the degloving process. Oh, it's pulling the skin off your bone. Hurts like crazy, so what do most people do? Well, where he pulled in, he couldn't reach the shutoff. Oh man. Well, thank God the operator that was working with him knew he was up there and he heard him yell for help and immediately hit the stop button. But before he could do it, he tried to grab his hand, pulled out and pulled both hands in. Oh my gosh. So oh. I ended up with both hands stuck in the conveyor belt, degloved partial on left, full degloved on right. Horrible injuries for someone that works with their hand. The potential to have infections and lifelong injuries, some broken bones. I mean, it was horrific injury so obviously the second they realized he was hurt they called 911 and then everybody looked at each other and went how do we get him out of here because he was stuck yeah and it shut down yeah how do you get someone out so they started to tear it apart what they should have done is got a knife that was big enough and sharp enough and cut the freaking conveyor belt to get him out well again i talk about practicing and yeah having yeah. a discussion about having things a plan that can happen. right yeah well somewhere along the line no one thought of ever having to cut someone from a conveyor belt because most of those guys will just take their time and it is they'll get paid by the hour when you're making an adjustment if it takes longer hand Good it off you. to the next yeah. guy right yeah. right he's not going to be mad at you because you didn't get it done by the end of your shift i get it right so you get pulled into i got to get this done i got to get this done i was tired i, I wasn't focused and i i did something i've never done i've never done that before i don't know why i did it flat out told me he's like yeah. i don't know why i pushed on that yeah. right so we did we made some changes we we will only do certain adjustments the area where he goes is now has a, a camera up there there's extra I think it's four extra e-stop buttons even down underneath it yeah yeah right case something so you can get a body part to yep. one yep that makes um, sense no one should ever do it again because we completely encaged it this time like you can't put the system back together and start it without the guard being on. Okay. And with the guard on it, you can't touch the conveyor belt. You, and the adjustment bolts, we drop down. We just use thread on, we drop them down like an extra couple feet. Okay. And so they come out through the guard. So we, re, we did a lot of fixing on our end, even though it really had nothing to do with that. Cause most guys that work with conveyors have the training and the knowledge. Sure, yeah. Not to touch, right? They know they're, and sometimes everybody's like, why was a guard off? You know, that'll be a question a lot of inspectors will ask. Yeah. Well, he just put a new belt on and he had to track it. And to track it, the adjustments, we're inside the yeah, guard. It's yeah. just the way it was built, yeah. right? So all these things, it, it's not always just one thing that leads to a bad injury. This this guy had, he was tired, he wasn't focused, yeah. he was in a hurry, he yeah. felt bad for the next guy coming in and having to deal with it. He got pissed off and it, it's, wow. it, it, it steamrolled on him. Yeah. And yeah. then he made a, a life decision that 
hurt his hands for quite some time. He's fine now. Is I'm he? Uh, that's, that's good to hear. Yeah, Boy, yeah we had a lot good. of communication. He came right back to the guy. He was fantastic to work through. That's great. That's Worked through it. I give him a ton of credit. And he he was his hardest owned critic. And I, he's like, am I in trouble? I'm like, why would you be in trouble? You Something silly happened today. It's never going to happen again. And I'm going to find out why, right? You, you, in my opinion, you didn't break any rules. You just made a bad choice. Let's figure this out and share it with everybody that works here so it doesn't happen again. But such a gruesome injury. He got lucky that it's not Boy, I, yeah, able. I, he's able to still do his job. Yeah, I'm get, glad. Get to retirement, right? So. A lot, of, a lot of detective work you do in your line, though. In terms, I, I shortened that. It's a very, very long story. No, but, 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 yeah. no, but you know, there's a lot of detective work, and that comes across in all your stories. And, and, and you know, you're looking at all the various aspects of something, and the people, and, and, and motivations, and fatigue, whatever. Um, and bad story, but I mean, some good came out. A lot of good came out of it. Uh, what lot, happened to this guy? A lot. You know? I changed the process, you know, and a lot of places might not have just one conveyor. Yeah, yeah. They had, you know, 30. Yeah. So fixed them all. We evaluated them all. Just not the one where it was a, it just happened, right? And, and one thing you'll probably never know for sure, who else did it help by having done that? Right. You know? Oh yeah, that's that's easy because everybody's like, that's so much. It goes, it's kind of a pain in the butt because we got to put the guard on before but we start it. We kind of get it and I'm... Because sometimes it'll bump the side of the guard. So we just made a, a minor adjustment. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. work through yeah. that. Sure, yeah. sure. Okay. Okay. We still can't get in there. Don't put your fingers here. Okay. So, right. Start it up. We'll, we'll modify this. We'll do. It. And each yeah. one was different, and it took time. It, it, people realize you got to realize it takes time to make yeah, those kind of repairs does. and and changes. But instantly, because of that injury, it was front. So I took every advantage of fixing everything else related to it. Right. So let's just fix it all and train it up. And again, he was his own harsh critic. Yeah. But you know, the first day back from work, probably a little on the tired. Oh yeah, yeah, up. yeah. That's having that's, a bad day. Things weren't going, and you just and that, you get caught up in it. That happens to everybody. That's a, it's going to happen. To anybody on any given day could be like that. It can too, be like so. that. So I was I was trying to tell everybody, well, if you're having a bad day as a supervisor, try to pay attention to your employees. Was it the supervisor's fault? Heck yeah. no. Um, was it the employee's fault for letting things steamroll on them? Yeah. You have some control over it as a person, right? Yeah. Hey, I'm feeling stressed, or I'm just step away for a second. Step away from the you, station. Go tell your supervisor. Or I'm, I'm taking five. I'm going to take a walk. I'm going to walk one lap around the shop and just get my head right. Right? Here's what I'm dealing with. Mike, are you all right? Or can you send the other guy to work on that for a second? Yeah. I'm going to yeah. take a break. Yeah. I'm tired. I don't want to get hurt. And it's it's making me mad. So you live and you learn. But man, I hate seeing bad injuries like that. It yeah, had an okay, good ending. It could have been a uh, clear I, ending for the guy. I really am. Yeah, no kidding. When you when you mentioned he was like this, that's like, well, that's, that's that. But looks like he came back and that's... And the guys that that's did get thing. him out did a really darn good job. They have a pretty good first aid crew. They know what they're doing. They have a, a guy that's a fireman. Yeah. So he literally helped him a lot by well, the time I, the ambulance got there. Right? I'll bet that's, yeah. that's, that, that's not a pretty scene, dude. No, that's, but, that's, yeah. beyond, that's beyond an ouch or uh, uh, an ouch <laughs> story. Just a little bit more than <laughs> I mean, an ouch. But, <laughs> but it happens. Stories. This is what this guy has a lot of, but they always have, a, uh, you know, there's always morals to them. There's always a lot of great ideas that come out of them. You can watch more of these stories at his website, Safety Integration. That's safety, spelled S-A-F-T, integration.com. Check out his website, watch some more of the videos, hear some of the stories, be inspired, get some information. And then if you want to learn more, just give Greg a call. Thanks again, man. You too.